What is happening, guys? I am back here with another review. Oh, excuse me. Volume 4. God, it feels like it was just yesterday that I did uh, Volume 3, but... Um, no, I think that was like two days ago, but... Oh my god, I'm burping. Oh, hey guys, so I'm here with Volume 4. Let me... Sorry, I'm just doing... Uh, watching a little wrestling. So, Volume 4. A Woman Called Widow. Just got done with it, covering 1970 to 1972. We are now in the 70s of Daredevil. Uh... Written by Thomas, uh, Roy Thomas, Jerry Conway, and G. Colin doing primarily the pencils. Uh, so this is now the end of Roy Thomas, and now we're into the Jerry Conway era. Still with Gene Colin for uh, the foreseeable future. And this, this volume, which collects uh, issues 64 to 86 of Daredevil and Iron Man 35 and half of 36 the new the this just got reprinted so the new reprint says material from iron man number 36 this this is the first print so this doesn't say that on the back so just for those of you who it, like literally with issue 36 it it stops like at page 10 and then because that's the end of, of daredevil's run pretty good too there's a lot of um storylines not not as consistent as the previous three volumes like i can't I can't tell you like in order from like 64 to, to 86 what happens, but I did post it in the communities tab if you guys want to take a look at it. I know like issue 64 starts off with the uh, the stunt master returns and now uh, Daredevil's in Los Angeles. He's last volume. Um, Karen left Daredevil, Matt Murdock, as we know, uh, left him to go over to the West Coast to become an actress. Not porn yet. She uh, is actually eking out a, a, a successful career. Uh, in the beginning of this volume, she's uh, a bit player on a soap opera. And by the end of the volume, she's a full-blown movie star. So within, yeah, like two years. I don't know if they use Marvel time or our time. I think still they were using our time. So between 70 to 72 within two years, Karen Page has now become a star. But in the beginning, um, Matt goes out to California, he runs into the stunt master, he runs into stilt man, he uh, gets involved with the soap opera actors, this dude named Brother Brimstone, who, the actor who plays Brother Brimstone, uh, kills, kills the actor, and then, um, was that where it turns out to be Mr. Hyde, I forget. But, uh, no, 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 it's, um, no, it's actually the lead actor, Vincent Sterling or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool. It's kind of like a soap opera within a soap opera. I always feel like these comic books are like soap operas in animated form. So, uh, it's, it's interesting how they, they play up the, uh, the whole soap opera angle in a comic book. And, uh, I, I think they, they, they took inspiration from Dark Shadows. There are a lot of hints and references to Dark Shadows without them actually naming Dark Shadows, which, as you may or may not know, was a pretty popular gothic soap opera uh, and comic book, too, from, like, 1966 to 1971. Um, so that was right around this time. Very popular show. And of course, they made the uh, Johnny Depp movie with uh, Tim Burton directing it. Anyway, um, so... Dee Dee's basically out in L.A. to get Karen back. He loves her. She loves him. But they're, you know, playing it back and forth. She knows he's Daredevil. Um, and she doesn't want him to be Daredevil. She wants to marry him and settle down and be out of the superhero biz. But Dee Dee loves it so much. She loves the, the rush and the thrill of it. And so she breaks off and goes on her own to L.A. And Matt's trying to get her back. So, uh, I'd say, yeah, from like 64 to 68, he's in L.A. Um, trying to get Karen back. Then he gives up and comes back to New York. He's like, okay, I'll leave you alone. You figure out what you want to do. I'm going to go back to the East Coast. So he does. Um, and then, uh, I know issue 69, he hooks up with Black Panther. They took on this gang of black kids, these black people with their big afros. And they're like, oh my goodness, you know, life of crime. Of course, it's Harlem, a Harlem the Thunderbolts. So that's the gang's name, the Thunderbolts. And I think they also had something to do with um, Falcon, if I'm not mistaken, because he's also based in, in Harlem. Um, 
And then 7071 was actually a pretty good issue. It was uh, the Tribune going after the New York Three, which is uh, in reference to the Chicago Seven. Um, Y'all should look that up. Uh, basically, um, these kids were being sandbagged or railroaded by the police uh, for bombing the New York Hilton Hotel where Vice Pre the real life Vice President um, uh, Spiro Agnew was staying at. They actually showed, you know, Spiro Agnew, like they actually drew him pretty well. Gene Colan, amazing artist. Wow. I mean, just his, his, his rendition of and likeness of, of Spiro Agnew. He even had uh, Walter Cronkite uh, make a cameo there. Um, I always love seeing celebrities make appearances in, in comic books. It's very rare, but because I think it's just like a, they don't want to get sued. Marvel and DC don't want to get sued. Like what happened to Amy Grant? Uh, look that up as well, guys. Doctor Strange and all that. Um, but yeah, so uh, the Tribune is this fanatic, this this hayseed hick who's so pro-American. He's like a cowboy. He's an actor too, like Karen. Oh, and he even wants Karen to start his movie. Um, but he's he's he he becomes a costume. Uh, vigilante and he's going after communists and hippies and and all these people you know there's all this comment commentary about hippies and vietnam and all that stuff so this is really really timely stuff rather outdated before it's time it was rather timely um jerry conway uh he steps in with issue 72 so no so actually this is still roy thomas roy thomas wrote from like 64 to 71 and then um Jerry Conway at like 19 years, he was, yeah, at 19 years of age, he steps in as a writer of Marvel. Imagine being 19 years old and, and writing for Marvel. And But his first issue was kind of lame. It was Tagak, the Leopard Lord. Uh, he's uh, he's trying to find this dude. He's from an interdimensional area, uh, an interdimensional world, trying to catch a thief who's stealing stuff on Earth. It was silly. And what a horrible name. Tagak. I didn't know if it was Tagak or Tagit. Tagak. T A G A K, guys. It was typical, like, horribly named characters of the 60s and 70s. You know, he has this leopard named uh, Oprah. No, it's not Oprah. It's like like or Orpa or Oprah. Yeah, Oprah. No, it was, a, it was an Oprah, but it's like Orpha. Wait, it was Rapo spelled Opar. It was Opar. Because I remember it was like Rapo spelled backwards, but it's Opar. O P A R. Which is basically, it was basically Zabu. Like Kazar and Zabu. But it wasn't. Um, and then we move on to the uh, the crossover with Iron Man 35, Daredevil 73, and a little bit of Iron Man 36, where Daredevil, Nick Fury, Iron Man, um, they take on Spymaster and uh, the Zodiac Cartel, you know for the Zodiac Key, um, right? Then it was a 74, 74, the city of New York goes blind. <laughs> um, 75, 76 was the El Condor. Uh, Foggy and, and Matt go down to, not Mexico, no, it was Delvadia. So it's a, a fake country in South America called Delvadia. But actually pretty good though. It's pretty, they take on this bandit who's pretending to be this legend named uh, El Condor. So it's like south of the border. A lot of, I, I had to use the the, the stereotypical racial kind of, see, uh, see, si, senor, eh, you know, because that's how, in my mind's eye, that's how they were written as just very simple peasants. Um, let me see. Then 77, we had, oh, that was a good one. We had, uh, and that will be also in the um, volume four of, of Submariner. So it's Submariner, Spider Man, and Daredevil teaming up. Or no, they don't team up, they, they fight each other in Central Park. And then this chick in a pod um, takes Namor and, and Spider-Man with her, leaving Daredevil behind. And that goes into Submariner number 40. And 78, 79 was lame. It had the Man Bowl. So we had Tagak, the Leopard Lord. And we had the Man Bowl, 78, 79. Um, Matt makes friends with these hippies, George and uh, Dia. Um, yeah, Dia, not Dia, because the dude kept calling her Dee Dee. But they were like hippies, like dirty, grungy hippies. And I kept looking back at like volume one, volume two. I'm like, there are no hippies, no black people, nothing, no Spanish people. Everyone's so lily white in the Stan Lee era. And now all of a sudden with Gene Colan and Roy Thomas and Jerry Conway, there's black people, there's hippies, there's there's long hairs, there's bell bottoms, you know. 
it's weird. It's, it's weird how like the years just carry on, life carries on. It's so vastly different than what, you know, what was in volume one up to now. It's like when I read Captain America, reading volume one and then reading volume four and how much everything changed, the artwork, the, the design of characters. I, I love it. I love just having to just breeze right through these stories and seeing the Marvel Universe change as the decades roll on. I hope you guys experience that too and just be like, wow, uh, everything changed it's like suddenly. The, the the dialogue in the comic books is so much better or, or all right, you know. Um, anyway, so moving on. So 7879 was the Man Bull story. Um, kind of lame. Eh. And then today I read 80 through 86. So 80 was, um, what was 80? Shit. Oh, yeah, uh, The Owl, which is actually the cover of this. This is issue 80, the cover of this. It's actually a two-parter. 80 and 81 has The Owl. And then 81, we have uh, The Black Widow joining the cast. It's, it's not Daredevil and Black Widow, but here's where Natasha Romanoff is now a part of the Daredevil cast. Um, and she helps save uh, Dee Dee's life because he's sinking with the, uh, the owl copter down in the Hudson River. Um, 82 is a battle of scorpion. It's interesting. 82 and 83 is, um, he battles a scorpion in 82. Then 83, he fights Mr. Hyde. And Mr. Hyde wants to get the scorpion's body because they're, um, they're being, um, con not controlled, but they're being, uh, they, they, they're working with this guy, the assassin, who is Mr. Klein. Mr. Klein is blackmailing Foggy Nelson with information because Hollis, the, the dude Crime Wave, was posing as the assistant of Foggy, named Hollis, back in like issue 60. Um, and then, uh, so then Foggy decides, uh, I might as well resign as DA because no one's gonna want me anyway. Um, so there's a lot happening. And then of course, Natasha and Matt are getting closer. They're, they're falling in love. Yvonne is there. Uh, that's Natasha's chauffeur. Um, and then 84, uh, what was that one? 84 was, uh, oh, well, that's the, the finale with um, Mr. Klein, the assassin, who turns out to be a, a time-traveling android who's trying to destroy um, certain paths in the present so that his master, Ball, B-A-A-L, two, two A's, um, can can survive. Yeah, it's a little, I don't know. This whole, this whole storyline from like 78 to 84 was just, a bit muddled you know there's mr klein in the background you think mr klein's a human but he turns out he's an android an android from the future so it's just a lot of stuff that they just pile on and just makes no sense and then 85 um they fight black widow daredevil and black widow fight the gladiator again uh in a plane like fifteen thousand feet up in the air um so he, it's funny the last volume issue 63 the very last issue he was the last villain in this, he's the second to the last. I'm talking about Gladiator. So Gladiator uh, is in issue 85, and then 86 is um, the Ox. The Ox comes back, who we haven't seen since issue 15, when he traded bodies and minds with um, Dr. Carl Strag. And, uh, but it's kind of sad, because now uh, he's dying from radioactive poisoning. Um, so Ox, who's in the Enforcers, is now in the body of Carl Strag, He's dying, so they let him go, like paroled him, they let him go free, but he's dying. And so he becomes Ox once again. He transforms into the Ox and he goes after Foggy and, and Daredevil, and they're at a party, and it just ends like it's sad because he's uh Daredevil helps Ox find peace. And he dies. He dies. Um so now Carl Carl Strag is dead, Ox is dead, and that's pretty much the end of, of the villains the end of 86 um that's the end of, of of matt and karen karen is like okay this can never be we can never be i have my career in la i'm, I'm gonna do that matt's like okay bye you know but now he has a natasha black widow and then uh yeah karen's like uh, go to him natasha she's like <clears throat> karen passes matt on to natasha and she's like go to him uh he's not mine anymore and so that's pretty much it. Karen leaves. And Karen, oddly enough, I, I looked it up, Karen eventually joins Ghost Rider. Um, so actually, in the second volume that's going to come out in a couple of months, 
uh, Ghost Rider uh, Volume 2, The Salvation Run, that's going to have Karen um, joining that cast, and she's no longer going to be in, in Daredevil. She does appear again in issue 138, which is, I think, Volume 6 or 7. I think it's Volume 7, The Concrete Jungle. Um, and then that's it. Then we don't see her until issue 227, where she's hooked on heroin. She's doing porn. She sells Matt's identity as Daredevil to the Kingpin or to a drug dealer who sells it to the Kingpin. And that's in the 80s. That's like 1986. So after after this volume, we don't see Karen for a very long time, which is kind of sad. It's like we we enjoyed her. I, I kind of like she was a little like, oh, I love Matt. I wish he would pay attention to me, you know, but for eight years from 64 to 72, she was a, a, a primary character and now she's gone. She's now written out. Like, like in the daytime soap opera, the characters no longer needed, and now we move on to other characters. So now we have Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. the Black Widow, joining the cast. She's now Daredevil's love interest, and they're going to move to San Francisco uh, starting next issue. So that's um, volume eight, uh, five going out west. I already put it in my backpack, and I'm not going to pull it out. But So the, the next one, guys, is going to be... Um, Volume 5 going out west, and I can't wait. I don't know why. I'm just excited to read that one. That's going to cover 1972 to 1974, so another two years. Um, and that'll cover issues 87 to 107 and Avengers number 111. Avengers 111 crosses over with, um, that's the one where the X-Men in 1973, when the X-Men were in the hiatus, uh, the, their, their hiatus period. The X-Men and the Avengers team up against Magneto. Uh, Magneto captured the X-Men, and that happened in, in 110, but that's not in this volume. Um, so it's, it's weird. It's like a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's 110 and 111 of Avengers and Daredevil 99. However, the X-Men did not appear in, in Daredevil 99, and Daredevil did not appear in Avengers 110. So those weren't included in either volume. However, 111 has everybody. And I remember 111 has a uh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye comes looking for Natasha, and he, he gets uh, stonewalled and cock blocked by uh, by Ivan. Um, but it's part of the the, the Magneto story uh, and the X Men and all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, delving more into uh, to Daredevil, we'll be pushing through issue 100 in Volume Five. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, what, what else? Yeah, Ang a lot of first appearances. I know Angar the Screamer will appear. He's a, a hippie who screams. That's his power. I'm spitting all over myself. Gross. Um, more Black Widow. Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty much it. You guys get the idea. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, this just came out uh, in a second print. This is the first. This is my first print which I got on eBay. But you can get this now in your local comic shop. I'm sure it's it's there. I saw it at one of my comic shops uh, over the weekend. So definitely you guys can can still get it. I recommend it. Um, it's a mishmash of, of a lot of interesting stories. Some lame stuff like Man Bull and Tagat. Tagak. Tagak. Tagak the Leopard Lord. So, you know. But there's some good stuff. There's some good stuff. A lot of hippies. A lot of timely stuff about uh, what's going on in the world. Um, yeah, and pretty much it. Uh, pretty much that, that's it. Uh, so that's it, guys. I've had enough of this. I hope you enjoyed it. And I don't think I phoned that one in. Uh, once again, guys, I read these epics so you don't have to, but I encourage you to read them because these epics are phenomenal. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you.